Taking a look at this Gigabyte RTX 4060 low profile version. This was the cheapest one I could find of a 4060 card. Just curious to see if my old computer benefits from a 4060 compared to a 1060 six gigabyte card. My CPU is an Intel i7-6700, so that's probably gonna be my main limitation. I'm also curious about the sound profile of this. The main benefit that I'm looking for personally is the AV1 encode decode. It does have three fans, so hopefully that offsets the size of the fans. Ports, we have two Display Port and two HDMI. That was an interesting combination. And then it also comes with the low profile bracket thing in case you want to uh, put it in some type of ITX build or something. It has some weight to it. On the back here, we have a eight pin connector, but the thermal profile, the TDP or whatever you want to call it for GPUs, 115 watt card, it does exceed the 75 watts of the PCIe connector. I'll do benchmarks on the 1060, swap this out and see if it's any better. The benchmark I'll be using is called Ferronix Test Suite. Besides the benchmarks, I do have a kilowatt EZ, which is going to measure wattage. So it'll be on screen and see if there is a difference between the 4060 and 1060. As far as I can tell, the 4060 is more efficient than the 1060. So that's a nice benefit of not buying a GPU for many years is that you get the benefits of a smaller manufacturing process and any advancements along the way. In Final Fantasy XIV, there is a noticeable improvement in the score between this and the 1060. The two other games at 1080p, it didn't really matter. I think that Portal in my case was limited to the v-sync of the monitor. There was a significant improvement with the blender render times for 3D modeling stuff. So if you are into that, the getting a new GPU makes a ton of sense. There was a big difference in the Chaos Group V-Ray on the score there. Even the 2D rendering in Java, there was a large improvement in the score. For Mark, with the MSAA turned off, there was a large improvement in frames per second. There was a benefit in the superposition benchmark using the ultra quality settings, basically double or almost triple the amount of frames happening. And again, consider that I'm still using the same processor I was before, so that's a pretty nice improvement. I'm sure there's still more performance on the table. In Magic Vegas Pro doing renders with the H.264 and also H.265, which were very close, it went around 9.6 for the 1060 up to 12.3 frames on average on the 4060 so there was an improvement in render times it's pretty nice i do a ton of video stuff for long video projects i do think this will make a difference even if you don't change out your processor i did do long recordings tracking the power use i have to look through those in detail but i'll put some information on the screen if i find anything important i did see that the 1060 using firmark topped out a little bit higher than the 4060 that's surprising considering you are getting more performance and also it's using less power at least in that specific case the benefit of a smaller manufacturing process newer technology that's pretty cool in this case with the gigabyte low profile version there are some drawbacks obviously the sound profile is not great when it gets taxed has three small fans better than two but small fans don't sound great so that's the main negative i'm actually going to be sending this back i picked this one up because it was cheaper than anything else i could find but it's worth spending more money if you have to to get a card with larger physically larger fans this is a specialty card obviously if you need it you need it very nice card for what it is anyways hope you enjoyed this comparison of a 1066 gigabyte msi card to this gigabyte 4060 low profile card very interesting results i was surprised that even with my old processor i was seeing some improvements it's kind of tech i suppose see ya